post flood era, there were how many know how many people were saved? Of course, uh, from the ark in Noah's ark. How many people were saved? Anybody can tell? How many? Eight people, right? Ham, Shem, and Japheth, Noah and his wife, Ham, Shem, and Japheth, and their wives. So, what happened here is that from the descendants of Ham, there were 30 nations from the descendants of Ham. 30 nations. The, the reason why Ham had the largest descendants is because everything that had to deal with food, shelter, and clothing, they were the catalyst to do that. We'll see that in a moment in Genesis chapter 9. And then, of course, through Japheth, that was 26 nations. This is where the Messiah came, came through. And then, of course, through Shem, I mean, through Japheth, the technology came through, and through uh, Shem, the Messiah came through. The descendants of Ham being the largest amount of descendants. Everything that had to do with food, shelter, and clothing, we see that the descendants of Ham had to bent or were the catalyst or had the character to lay the foundation in post-flood time. And when we're talking about early post-flood, then a lot of the things I have here is like pre-flood. So in early post-flood, you had Ham, Shem, and Japheth. So the earth was, had to be uh, repopulated. And then, of course, uh, Ham, Shem, and Japheth, and Ham de de uh, descendants, we see that fill all this particular area. They were, they were basically from uh, the northern part of Israel, the Canaanites, the Jebusites, the, the Havites, and the Gergesites, all these were descendants of Ham. And they sell in this area, and they all sell, uh, some of them sell in Africa. So Mizarim sell in what we call Egypt. He was the founder of Egypt. And of course, Shem descendants, east of the Jordan River, descendants were 26 nations from descendants of Shem. And then Japheth sell in the northwestern area to Europe. And that's where we, it, the Europeans basically were the catalyst for our technology. And because the Bible says that Japheth would be enlarged. And then, of course, we see that uh, that, was, that was done. And then, of course, uh, Shem was the catalyst where the Messiah came through. And then Ham was, had to bend for the later foundation, food, shelter, and clothing. So, now, what happened is that the first five or the first five events in the Bible affected all of mankind. That was creation, the fall, the curse, the flood, and the dispersion. Those five events affected all of mankind. So when you come to Genesis chapter 12, then God needed a, a person to work through, and that was Abraham for the Messiah to come through the line of Abraham. So everything started, basically Christianity starts here. Through uh, the first relationship, we see that the proselytes from Judaism came from all over. They, come to, they came to the feast. They came to the various uh, 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 celebrations and all the various uh, uh, feast days. And then that relationship grew until the time of Jesus 2,000 years ago. And then, of course, the death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus Christ started what we call basically the, the movement as far as Christianity is concerned. So on Pentecost, we see in uh, uh, Acts chapter you know, 1 and Acts chapter 2, where the gospel began to go into Africa, into Asia, and also into Europe. So this is the sacred bridge this was the framework in which Christianity began.